Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. There was a time giants enslaved humans, using them for forced labor, and even as food. This is a Mesopotamian engraving of the giant god and goddess, Yudu and Inanna, holding earthlings captive using a nose ring. No doubt one of the less flattering moments in our history. This is similar to more recent illustrations, such as the 17th century Cornish story Jack the Giant Killer. Here, a giant is seen holding humans as slaves. Mesopotamia is supposed to have been 5,000 years ago, and the medieval tales 500 years ago. Just one of many examples of correspondence between very ancient and fairly recent. Human enslavement. Is that why we have catastrophic events? Were we waging war against our slave masters? Who eradicated these giants? Why has their presence faded over the last few hundred years? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end, to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. And then, there are giants who live beside smaller humans in peace. This photo engraving is of the funeral procession of Vicente Guerrero, made in 1833. He was the second president of Mexico. His funeral took place in Culapam, Oaxaca, Mexico. In attendance are ecclesiastics, civilians and giants. This is a photo engraving. That means it captures a reality of the time. Giants casually mingle with humans, and no big deal is made of it. 1833 is recent. Less than 200 years ago. Your great-grandmother might have lived alongside giants. This is a lithograph that was made in 1830. The subtitle says, Steppe Inhabitants of Asian Tartary. The subtitle does not mention the giants, it just calls them, and the two smaller human steppe inhabitants, as if this were entirely normal. Giants were with us in the 1700s and 1800s, through several revolutionary wars. Then came World War I. After that, the giants mostly disappeared. If there were any left, they were featured in circus shows. The theme of circus giants continued until World War II. After that, they even disappeared from there. Is it possible that all the revolutionary wars that were happening around the world at the time, were a cover for the real war against the giants? These struggles for independence all happened at around the same time, worldwide, as if coordinated. Some researchers have noticed how they shared the same fashion designer, regardless of whether they were in the US, UK, France or Russia. This is a photo of Baptist and Antoine Hugo, late 1880s. They were called the Giants of the Alps, and were featured in circus shows. It's interesting to me, that 1830s, giants were treated as normal parts of everyday life, and 1880s, giants were circus attractions. What happened between 1830 and 1880 to create such a profound change in perception? I went searching for the earliest mention of giants as circus performers. I found Anna Swan, 1862. So what happened between 1830 and 1862 to create such a profound change in perception? In 30 years, we went from living alongside giants and calling them inhabitants, to enslaving them as circus freaks. The first circus freak shows began in the 1840s apparently. That's around the same time, according to previous video, that massive cities sprang up seemingly out of nowhere, while others burned to the ground. Some researchers say that it was in the late 1840s that a great reset happened, meaning the old earth was wiped away and given a fresh start. I never gave that theory much attention, but maybe it's true. These photos are also from the 1800s. National Geographic photos from the 1920s. 
China, 1865, a guy named Jan Suchai. This drawing is of Irishman, Charles Byrne, born in 1761. The skeleton of Byrne is still on display today in the Hunterian Museum in London. This is a 1756 painting by Nicholas Ragonet. Much more can be found around the internet. You also find thousands of old newspaper articles on the skeletons of giants having been found. This one is from July 13, 1908 in the Washington Times. An example from 1902. Were all these skeletons unearthed during that time because the war against giants had been recent? Or was this a media campaign to make it look like they were more ancient? It's hard to tell from here. They apparently lost the battle. But why would our governments go to such lengths to mask their reality? Or to conceal that they were defeated? To act like nothing ever happened? To re-script history? If they defeated the giants, wouldn't they want to advertise and commemorate it? The religious scriptures say that the giants are the offspring of forbidden relations between angels and humans. Were they eradicated by the rulers of this realm? Thanks to our fake education system, we know very little about them, or the circumstances of their disappearance. We're simply told giants didn't exist, because they don't fit the Darwinist narrative. I remember specifically asking this question of a school teacher when I was young. She said, those are Bible fairy tales. In school we learn about real things that can be proven by science. In folk tales, giants are presented as dumb, axe and falcs wielding, nomadic monsters that harass humans. On the other hand, the many large structures could be more easily explained with their help. They are not the works of brainless monsters. In the photos we do have from the old times, they don't seem to differ from smaller humans, except in size. If giants were much more recent, it would explain the gigantic doors we see on so many buildings ascribed to the Middle Ages. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.